first of all is the traffic light <laughs> in ghana i don't know about other african countries in ghana like when you want to cross the the, the road as a pedestrian you just have to run <laughs> even on motorways people run to cross the road and over here the traffic light is so organized those who work have their own traffic lighting the cars also have their traffic lighting for me it was so amazing also i went to the shop for the first time to get some groceries and the ginger roots it was so big for me it just seems so unreal because like come on the ginger roots we have in ghana they look natural and like you know they look natural but here it just looks so big and it was it was i found it very very surprising also doom so oh i'm saying doom so like only Ghanaians are going to watch this like uh there is no way you'll be in ghana for one week and not experience lighthouse for even once i came here i was a rasmus student so i had to stay for only five months i stayed for the whole five months and i didn't encounter of like I didn't see light out. Light out didn't okay even once. So come on. I was very surprised about it. So this those are just a few things. There are a lot, but you know, we don't have the whole time in the world. So yeah. <laughs> Great one. So talking about surprises, any worst experiences in Lithuania? Any worst experiences also? I did. Actually, I still feel bad about it. I don't know if I should feel bad, but you know, I still feel kind of bad about it. There is this city called Kaunas. I was, when I had just come, like maybe two months, no, not two months. Like, I don't really remember. When I just come, I went to the city called Kaunas. You know, Ghana, we respect people a lot, especially old people. I saw this old woman crossing the road with like some heavy load. And as a Ghanaian and, and as a human, I was like, um, I rushed to help this woman. <laughs> this, the way this woman looked at me. It's like I wanted to steal her stuff, you know? Yeah, this. And also, uh, like, uh, just meeting people, you know, in Ghana. We are so friendly. You meet somebody and you try to have a chit chat. Over here, like you are talking to the person and it's like, you are rather the weird one. They look at you in some way and mm -mm, it's not nice. Yeah, I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I want us to look at some of the opportunities in Lithuania for experts and foreigners. But first, let me ask you, what, what were some of the biggest challenges you also faced in Lithuania? What were some of the biggest challenges? Well, yes, the language, language barrier. You know, Lithu Lithuanian is the national language of Lithuania. And you know, when I came, I spoke only English and, you know, the languages we speak in Ghana. So, uh, communicating with people here was a little bit difficult for me. The, the youngsters speak English all right, but like, you know, sometimes you, you face the old people and you expect them to understand you, but they are speaking Lithuanian, they are speaking Russian, it's frustrating. Also the food, oh my God, the food here is so different from what I used to eat in Ghana. Like I came here, there was something called sepelinate, like benku, but they have meat inside of potatoes. When I saw it, I thought it was benku. For those of you who don't know, benku is made from cassava and maize. We eat that in Ghana a lot. Like Nigerians call it fufu or something like that. Nigerians stop calling that thing fufu. It's not fufu. It's benku. So I saw that thing and I thought it was fufu, uh, benku. I tried it and it was so different. So yeah, first was language. Second was food. And like, you know, in Ghana, when you need directions to sample, you just ask people and they nicely show you where to go. Here, you have to use GPS. And for me, it was a lot. Yeah, those are mostly the, la the challenges I faced. Great. So let's move on to the opportunities. Are there opportunities for foreigners and expats in Lithuania? Yeah, the opportunities here are limitless. And um, to be honest with you, finding a job here is not the easiest thing. When I first came, like my second day here in Lithuania, I, I have been here for four years already, but my second day, I attended this conference and what is the woman like the woman who came to speak to us said was if you get a like she said getting a job in Lithuania is like an achievement do you understand that's how hard it is to get a job of course you can get jobs like cleaning like customer service and stuff 
but if you are looking for like a white collar job i am a programmer so getting that job as um like uh, getting that job without experience was a little bit difficult but um i'm not going to sit here and say there are not opportunities there are no opportunities because there are a lot of them people come here and they are doing so well and the thing is that lithuania is not like germany or uk those places there is already everything like almost there is there's already like almost everything but here in lithuania there are still some things that that don't exist for instance, right now, I'm starting an African store because I see an opportunity there. It's We have like only one African store here in Lunas. So I've seen an opportunity there and I'm trying to try my luck. You see, like I, I, I said earlier that getting a job is difficult, but I, I got a job anyway and I'm a software developer. There are opportunities, but when you come, you don't have to rush to get, you know, the white color jobs. Just start little, you know, baby steps. When I came, I started out as a welcome manager. What I basically did was, it was like customer service. When somebody comes, I welcome them, and they'll talk my talk. When they are talking to my boss, I'll serve them coffee and stuff like that. But when you come, you may not get such a job. So if you get cleaning to pay your bills, it's okay. Take it. No one is like no Ghanaian is here to judge you. And those home, they will not even see what you're doing here if you don't post it on social media. So start little. And the, the bigger opportunities will come. The bigger opportunity will come. What are some of the jobs that are very, very, very easy for experts and foreigners to find in Lithuania? What are some of the jobs? Um, the jobs that are easy to get are mostly customer service jobs and cleaning. Those ones are very easy to get. And Lithuania is very high on tech. There are a lot of international tech companies here in Lithuania so if you have the skills also yeah you will get a job so the thing is that lithuanians value skills over education and your phd or whatever they don't care they value skills a lot so it you have a chance here in lithuania so for my it guys you have a chance in lithuania let's look at the cost of living in lithuania comparing to other countries how is the cost of living in lithuania are things high are things expensive are things very low how is the cost of living mm, compared to lithuania and other bigger eu countries cost of living in lithuania is very good of course i live in the city capital is called vilnius vilnius is not cheap but if you go to other countries uh, other cities like kaunas and the small small cities i'm Ghanaian, i'm african so i'm saying small small i know it's bad but yeah, and the small, small cities, um, those places are even cheaper. Thing is that when you go to Germany, you or I always say Germany and UK, you, you know, those are the ones that are common where I come from. When you go to those places, of course you earn a lot, but but you you spend so much on your apartment and feeding yourself. When I came here afresh, for the after the when I like my after the first year into the second year, I rented an apartment and I was paying 220 30 euros a month, and my utilities were 50 euros. And I, I was very cheap on food, so the whole month I spent like 100 euros on food. So in total, it was like th uh, 400, I spent 400 euros on those things. And even I, I was more economical. I could have gone even cheaper. I could have gotten an apartment with a roommate, shared and paid even way little uh, rent, you know? So cost of living here is very good. Yeah, compared, and even in Ghana, Ghana, come on, the salaries are bad, but to rent a place in Ghana, you now you know, the thing is expensive. Things that I classified as luxury in Ghana, here I see them as basic. Today, for instance, I asked my mother to go and buy me cow stomach. I don't know if it like we call it towel. You know, you know that thing, right? Cow stomach. Yeah. So that cow stomach, a kilogram is four euros sixty cents. But in Ghana, it's it's like expensive. Yeah, I she brought play like it's a, it was a lot, and it was so cheap. Chicken here is cheap. Eggs is so cheap. So like food, especially food, is very cheap. 
transportation also transportation is very cheap here if you are a student here you pay five euros 80 cents and use the bus to go wherever you want to go within the country for the whole month only less than six euros so so you understand when i was a student in ghana to travel from my sister's place to my school <laughs> i paid 10 10 cents i almost said 10 euros so you see <laughs> okay so we're speaking about job opportunities in lithuania let's talk about the healthcare also how does the healthcare in lithuania support foreigners and expats no you have to pay the taxes you have to pay the national the national ta taxes to get to, to access the national hospital or the country's hospital for free um sorry free um by public like uh by country hospital i mean the public hospital so you pay like um i think 65 euros or something and then you get to use the hospital for free and if you are working also the taxes you pay but the thing is that the taxes here is so high for instance if you're working you're earning thousand euros a month they take 40 percent of that as taxes so you get only 600 euros yeah, because it takes so much taxes, they, they, they make sure that you you are well taken care of. So when I was going to give birth, I didn't have to pay for anything. But like, I was well taken care of. I had, okay, my husband wanted me to have my private room, so he paid extra. But even that extra, I don't remember, but it's less than 100 euros. So the healthcare here is very good. Thing is that people in the UK travel to lithuania to have um surgeries just because the doctors here are very good and very com um, committed to their jobs plus they are not as expensive as doctors in the uk that's how good the healthcare here is wow that's how good the healthcare is if in case you just join us here at gh africa tv if this is your first time of watching a video on our platform, kindly subscribe to our channel and click or hit on the bell notification icon to always get an update from us whenever we upload a new video. We are almost done with our conversation though. We are almost done. So, Obagana, any advice for anyone who wants to travel abroad as an expat? Any advice? Uh, if, you're, if you're coming to Lithuania, not Lithuania, if you're traveling abroad, regardless of where you are from, please do your research. And don't try to um, capitalize or make decisions based on what you see on social media, like TikTok and stuff. Go to the official the, the official website or the official platform of the country. Lithuania, for instance, they have their, their official website is called migris.lt. Over there, you'll find all of the information you need. Also, like me, I am a social media, like I am a content creator, right? For those of you don't, who don't know me, like I'm a Baba guy, you find me on TikTok. When you go, you will see so many bad comments under my videos. But the thing is that those who see those comments think that that is how it is here in Lithuania, but it's so different. I have never, ever face racism walking out there never and then of course they may be pretending like they may just show like you know the nice face just to make it look like they're not racist but it never shows ever so if you go to tick so like i was saying if you go to tiktok and then you see such comments and you decide to make your decision based on those things then you see you are deceiving yourself it's not like that in person they are not like that and for the financial tips i see these things a lot these days they say that the uh, the family you make is more important than the family you come from when you come to when you come abroad when you travel abroad please don't try to impress your family back home those people will drain you <laughs> like you you try so hard to impress them you try so hard to make their lives comfortable but they will never be satisfied they'll keep asking and asking and the thing is that the money you spend they're, they're, they're not even going to use it for anything good they're just going to waste it so when you come please like i i i respect family i love my family so much i try to support them as much as i can i am not saying don't support them please support them but you should remember that you are here to build a future for yourself and your future family if you don't have a family already 
So don't try to send everything back home. Keep some for yourself and then invest wisely. Also, when you come, don't try to impress anyone. Like I'm talking about even people that live here. Don't try to buy, you know, fancy clothes and branded clothes. Like what do you need those things for? Save, invest. You know, don't waste your money because like right now you, you are wasting it. But in the future, what happens? Meaning what, what you are doing right now, you keep, you are getting small money right now, right? But you are wasting it. So you're not getting to save, you're not getting to invest. And nothing is like, you're not getting any additional big money from anywhere. So you keep doing that same thing forever and ever. And like you you can't have a good life, you know? So this is the financial tip I have for people who are planning to come abroad. Support your family, 100%. But keep some for yourself. It's very important. Great. Oba, I want you to give a shout out to family and friends. You can also add up your social media handles to it. But before we finish with our conversation, you know, like many will love to travel to Ghana, your home country. So I want you to say a word, one or two, to anyone who wants to visit Ghana. Well, Ghana is a very beautiful country. If you've ever heard of Ghana before, I know you already know it's a very beautiful and peaceful country. I think the whole of Africa, it's the fourth or second most peaceful country, right? Yeah, and Ghanaian people are so kind. They are humanly, unlike some countries that, you know, you go and they treat you like, I don't want to, I don't want to use bad words, but they don't treat you like, Ghana is just like one of the best countries in Africa. And I'm so proud to be Ghanaian. Um, or Baboga, everywhere you go, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you'll find me everywhere, or Baboga. And uh, about shout outs, I would like to shout out to my family in Ghana, my parents, Mr. Richard, and his lovely wife, my mother, <laughs> uh, Emilia, also my friends in Ghana. Haruna, like when I was in Ghana, most of my friends were male, so you mostly hear their names. Justice, Abigail, Rebecca, and my classmates. I love you all, and shout out to you all.